Hi, let's talk about five approaches for effective study to clear CSER JRF net. Question based approach, figure based approach, problem based approach, connective and multiple approach. If we follow this approach, we can complete 13 units in less time. Each and every topic we can cover, we don't need to skip any unit and answering C part will be very easy. Question based approach. It is no matter how hard we study, at exam if we get confused after reading a question and not able to answer, what's the point of study? Follow a question based approach, go deep into the topic, get the answer and study the associated topic also. For example, we studied everything about cell cycle regulation. We know what is CDC25, V1, CDC2, etc. Just read the following question. After reading the following question, there is a chance it's also depend upon us. Some of us can answer, but others need two to three readings. At the time of examination, we don't have time to waste. Let's look whether we can answer this. Question is, in Schizosaccharomyces pombe, the recessive and dominant mutants have opposing phenotypes. While CDC2D, that is dominant, produces abnormally smaller cells, the CDC2R, that is recessive, produces abnormally longer cells. Some possible explanations are given below. CDC2D may lack interaction with V1. CDC2R may not, interaction, may not interact with CDC13 kinase. CDC2D may not interact with CDC25 phosphatase. CDC2R cells may be deficient in interaction with either CDC25 or V1. Which combination of above statement is correct? Take textbook card, soft copy, go to chapter 14, page number 565. Read it. If you don't know which chapter it is, search by keyword. Here it is CDC, right? Read it and understand. V1 control transition from G2 to M. If V1 get mutated, cells divide prematurely. What will be the result? Smaller cells. CDC25 activates CDC kinase. If CDC2 get mutated, cells does not divide, but continue to grow. What will be the result? Larger cells. Cells lack V1 smaller cells. Here, CDC2D produces smaller cells. So, option A is correct. CDC2D may lack interaction with V1. That's why smaller cells. Cells lack CDC25 phosphatase, larger cells. So here CDCR lacks CDC25. CDCR lacks CDC25 phosphatase. Look for that. Note in option. So if cells lack CDC25 phosphatase, what happens next? No interaction with CDC kinase, right? Look for it. Yeah, option B is also correct. So answer is A and B. If we are not study like this, even if we know everything about this topic, we must go for other options. What happens? Negative mark. Study like this. The concept will be clear and will be in our brain forever. Whenever this type of question comes, we can answer easily. Let's discuss one more question. Question is, some of the following transgenic approaches could be used for functional characterization of endogenous genes in plants. Transformation using a binary vector containing a strong enhancer element and lacking the right border of tDNA. Transformation using a binary vector containing a promoterless reporter gene sequence and a selection marker gene cassette within the tDNA. Transformation using a binary vector containing only a strong enhancer element and a selection marker gene cassette within the tDNA. Transformation using a binary vector lacking a reporter gene as well as both the left and right borders of tDNA. Which one of the following combination can be used? That's the question. Take Primrose, Chapter 40, Gene Run for Two Plants. Page number 277, then read about tDNA. It's in page number 280. 
what we will get we can understand right border is very essential for tdna transfer left border is not essential if we know this we can easily cross out which one a and b what is remaining b and c just check it read it again that's the answer okay we can also do question based approach for ecology and evolution for ecology and evolution don't go for reading from the beginning definitely we will get bored and skip this unit right please follow a question based approach 30 to 40 questions are sufficient to clear almost all the topics csr questions are like that yeah after find out the answer just go for first round of reading of that area and associated topics also maybe one or one or three pages for one question Make point notes, then second round of reading, add on to that point. Let's discuss one question. Orchid of the genus Cryptostylis are known to maintain preparatory isolation because their flowers look and smell like females of the wasp of genus Lysopimla. When male wasp visit and attempt to mate with the flower, the shape of anther and stigma allows correct placement and transfer of pollen to the wasp, which then transfers the pollen to the species-specific flower that it next attempt to mate with. This pre-psychotic barrier that prevents interspecies cross-pollination in cryptostylis is best explained by behavioral isolation through mimicry, Mechanical isolation through mimicry, temporal isolation, habitat isolation. From this question, we can understand it's from evolution. Reference book Mark Ridley. Go to chapter 13, that is, species concept and intraspecific variation. Then, page number 355, isolating barriers. Read it, understand. Isolating barriers prevent interbreeding between species. Then, read pre psychotic mechanisms. We got the answer. Temporal isolation, mating of flowers times occur at different season. Flowering times occur at different season. So that's not the answer. Habitat isolation, the population concerned occur different habitat in the same general region. Behavioral isolation, in animals differences prevent population from mating. Mechanical isolation, Physical non-correspondence of flower parts prevent the transfer of pollen. Why? Only this wasp of genus Lysopimla can enter and collect pollen. So answer is mechanical isolation with mimicry. Then study other isolating mechanisms that is post-psychotic, geographic isolation, etc. The topic is completed. Diagram based study. We can study the major points, mechanism of action from diagram. Observe the diagram. If it is molecular biology, study the molecules names, example signaling molecules, transcription factors, maybe proteins, enzymes, etc. Analyze it, study, read the associated topics also. It is completed. Make notes, your own words, highlight the main point. Most of the topics we have to refer two or more books. It's very difficult to read two or more books and make note from it. It is time consuming. What we can do? Just analyze the diagram from two texts. See what is in common and is there any extra point in other texts. Just read it. Make note. Easy. You can find it very easy. It's very easy. We can do diagram based study for molecular biology, plant and animal physiology, biochemistry and genetic engineering. Problem-based approach. Give importance to problem-based study for biochemistry, genetics, ecology, and biostatics. In most of the test book, there are questions in the last pages of the test book, like C part questions. Find out those questions, study, work out the questions. Look this question. It's from genetics. Maternal inheritance of coiling of shell in snail is well established. The dextral coiling depend on dominant allele and sinistral coiling depend upon recessive allele. A female F1 progeny, a female F1 progeny of dextral type is crossed with a male sinistral snake. What will be the ratio of heterozygous is to homozygous individuals in 
F2 progeny. What we can do? Analyze the question, which type of cross and what we can and cannot learn from it. Then study monohybrid cross, dihybrid cross, test cross, sex-linked cross, cytoplasmic inheritance, maternal inheritance, etc. For answering this question, refer text Benjamin, chapter 5, Extensions and Modifications of Basal Principles. Extensions and Modifications of Basic Principles. Page number 120, read, Genetic Maternal Effect. It's genetic phenomenon. It's a genetic phenomenon that is sometimes confused with cytoplasmic inheritance, in which the genotype of the mother determines the phenotype of the offspring. We get the answer. Answer is 1 is to 1. See, by doing one question itself, we studied almost everything. Follow problem-based approach. Connective approach. What is connective approach? For example, study photosynthesis. After studying it, go for genetic engineering. That is how to improve photosynthetic efficiency by genetic engineering. If you are studying restriction enzyme, then study plasmids, then study plasmid vectors, then go for gene transfer to animals and plants. It's completed. If you are studying cell cycle, then study replication, DNA repair, apoptosis, cancer. These things are related. These topics are related. Many molecules involved in one also involved in other. You got the point? Cell membrane structure. After studying cell membrane structure, then study ion transport, then link it with cell signaling. Also study cell signaling. Those topics are completed. If we do a connective approach, we can cover two or more units in a day. One more thing, search the topic, the particular topic, the particular word in soft copy and study. If we do like this, it's very easy to understand the connection. For example, if we search CDC in Lodish, we, we, we will get result in two chapters, cell cycle regulation and also in chapter 9, that is genetic analysis of mutations. There we can study about what happens if CDC get mutated. It's so easy to follow these methods. Multiple approach. Studying multiple subject in a day. Different subject. Cover three or more topics. If you are following question based to all connective approach, it will be very easy to finish three or more topics in a day. And make sure these are from different units based on our syllabus. It will be completely depend upon us how much time we need for study. Make notes and also record the audio. We can listen whenever we get time. It's important. Record notes in our own voice. Listen to it, listen to it, and then again read the main point. Listen to the audio. It's in our brain forever. You understood? Before examination, final preparation is must. A 20-day revision plan is must. Whichever way you study, just revise and revise. If you follow this way, you will get CSAR JRF net. You can clear the coming one.